the necessity of transparency and timeliness in leadership. A stitch in time saves nine. This famous phrase couldn't have said it any better. Leadership is in all its entirety entails all spheres of discipline, servitude, and timeliness. Is it true that the year before election, the government seems to work effectively? It is ridiculous to waste limited time on activities that aren't central to the core of an administration. This in every way defeats the purpose of the opportunity to be saddled with such responsibility and comes off as poor decision making and mismanagement. This pattern of the end minute execution is visible in poor administration and it comes along with the baggage of weak politicking and bad governance. The time frame given to every administrative office is given based on feasibility, planning and execution. Every time frame in an administrative tenure was structured to enable proper execution of the vision of the office and failure to follow these structures will lead to an irreversible lapse. Using a month to execute a project that should have taken years to plan properly and execute not only destroy the mission and outputs of the project, but also destroys the reputation of the parties involved. To reduce the repetition of this ugly pattern, the following factors must be considered. Transparency in leadership, workable policies, vision that are scalable, timeliness in planning, effective monitoring and evaluation. When all these factors mentioned are being considered by those at the helm of affairs, there will be a decline in project execution lapses and fraud. Development and continuity in transparent and workable administration would be assured. Let's ponder on these words. The speed of decision making is the essence of good governance. Payish Kuya is a politician and cabinet minister in the government of India. So Tolu, what do you think about this? As usual, ah, politicians. Okay. Um, for me, I think I think uh, you you've hit the nail right on the head. You know, there's just something magical about the year before election year. Mm. I'm sure you like what is it? There's just something absolutely magical about it. So stuff that's not be able to be done in two three years. You know, the year before election, there's just some spirit of efficiency and excellence, you know, just jumps on our people. And things got to, start to get done. Roads start to get done. You know, hospitals get built. Schools get renovated. Because, like Two-Face said, it's time to tell us another line again. I mean, but I think there is a serious problem of orientation. You know, I say to people all the time, even leaders abroad, you know, in America, you know, in the UK, people that have done democracy for hundreds of years and are trained to be leaders, you know, to lead governance. They take courses in governance and leadership and strategy and decision making. Even these guys, many times they still falter and make mistakes. You know, in some cases they even fail woefully. Now that's someone that's been prepared to hold these offices. Now imagine someone that has no clue, mm. no training, no orientation, no preparation except for speeches, you know, um, in many cases, senseless speeches that have been, you know, written by a more clueless person for him to basically recite. So how would that person fare? This is not rocket science. I mean, to fail to plan is to plan to fail. That's exactly the problem, you know, we're having with leadership. Transparency is not even something we should start to talk about because we need a whole show to talk about transparency and leadership. <laughs> in, 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 you know, well, the timeliness, you said, timeliness, you know, is just a magical thing that happens when it's time for them to get our votes again. Mm. I'll wrap up with this. Someone has said that, have you ever thought about how come their villages, you know, the Settlements in Nigeria that never seen power before. They don't have power. They don't have water, you know, potable water. They don't have basic, basic essentials of life. 
But when it's time for election, a polling booth appears mm. in that location. A polling booth appears. But these are guys that have not seen power for years. But you can get a polling booth there when it's time to vote. Mm. And then what happens? Stomach infrastructure. Mm. You give them, you know, some things are impoverished. So 2,000 and 5,000 naira guarantees with their votes for another four years. Mm. Well, you know, just the, thank you very yeah. much, Tolu. The last time I remember last week while I was not la last two weeks ago, I said something about KPDM living in the moment, fixing the current problem. You know, there was this an instance something that happened during the lockdown, the saga around the lockdown era that the government actually gave items out, relief item, and some of these things were hoarded. And then some politicians had the effort to literally package this item using their own label. So they're using government property to campaign. Why? Because they're always thinking about the next election. You're not thinking about what are we going to do now to leave mm. unless the next election take care of itself. So um, I know the strategies want to say something, but Mr. Carrode, you have a lot to say. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I have so much to say. Yeah, but you have a lot. How, I mean, when you listed the things that should be done, I was just asking myself, okay, do you think they don't know these are the things that yeah. should be done to be effective? I mean, not rockets. Eh? Well, you see, our, there's a country... Okay, Ghana, um, when it's getting close to election, that is when the people wake up and make demands. That's when the nurses will go on strike. <laughs> and they said that the, uh, the, the agreement they had four years ago or three years ago has to be met. That's when doctors will remember that this is happening. That's when all these institutions will start coming up. That's when you see communities tell politicians or the government that you promised to do this road. You didn't do it. It's four years and you're going for another campaign. We are not going to vote for you. Mm -hmm. Now, you see, if you don't make demands, make hay while the sun shines. Mm -hmm. The best time to strike is when the metal is hot. That's the best time to strike and get the shape you want from that metal. And that is what we are not doing. I always say that politicians, you see, politicians all over the world will always attempt to cut corners, even in America. If you listen to the news this year, last year, you've seen people that almost cut corners, did one or two things and they were caught and blah, blah, blah. But you see, in our own case is that we don't have a system that checks them. Then the people themselves are just used to, oh, don't mind them, they are foolish politicians. And they continue. Mm. So we need to look at all these things. Wow. Uh, the uh, strategy. I mean, for me. <laughs> Yo, I want you to address it from a behavioral point of view because you know you're a behavioral um, coach. So why is this? It's, it's like a recurring decima. Is it the year before election? Things seems to work very well. They now recently remember that oh, student need this, school needs this, mm. this one needs that. But why don't you fix this thing? Let it be like you solve this problem, and the next administration should move on from there. So. You know, I'm not a politician and, you know... <laughs> you I've, can't speak for that. I've, you know, I've never got into the seat of power. So as much as I have goodwill, I've, I've got some good value system, but I don't know how I'm going to act mm. yeah. under that pressure. You know, oftentimes we don't know, you know, what we're going to do and all of that. So for me, I think it's just rinse and repeat. Mm. So, and if the trigger is not fixed, it's going to continue being a rinse and repeat um, strategy and this, any strategy that works. I mean, it's business sense. If it works, why do I need to change it? That's it. It's been working and we don't need to change it. And that's what I think. Mm. What? For us, we <laughs> Nigerians, sad, I will, it it's important for us to focus on making the system work. Mm. When we make it work, then we shouldn't bother ourselves about what happens subsequently because you take care of yourself. Oluwakayode is next after the break.